and welcome back to the channel. We're doing another video today in the Meet the Manufacturer series and I'm glad to welcome back Jack Jury from Shaw. How are you doing mate? Very good, how are you? Very well, thank you. So, um, I think we're going to go back into the Axiom Digital stuff and our console integration. Console integration, hugely, hugely requested feature. Yep. And it's quite you know, complicated for us as an RF manufacturer to, to get that right because we can do a lot of stuff in the box to prepare the unit yep. for console integration, but we rely on you know, the console manufacturers themselves to be able to take our control string in and, course, and yeah. unpackage that data and turn it into something useful at their end. Um, but we are very happy to report now we have got a number of consoles that you can integrate a lot of our RF systems with. Yeah, use um, them yourself, yep. Absolutely, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Great. So we've got a Yamaha QL1 here. Yep. Um, how do we set the two together? Excellent. So Yamahas are actually pretty easy to yep. get this right. Different consoles require some different things. Uh, but what Yamaha wants to see is primary Dante and control data on the same RJ45 connector. Okay, yeah. Directly into the primary Dante on the back of that. Yeah, understood. So to get this right, first of all, we need to talk a little bit about this four-port Ethernet switch. So this is just the, the receiver the rack panel. reverse. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And this four port switch can be used in a number of different ways depending on how you want to set your network up and ultimately what it is you're networking together. Mm -hmm. um, so we're dealing with two types of data in this switch. We've obviously got the short control data, which we've just discussed. We also carry both Dante's here as well. Yep. So out of the box in its kind of factory reset mode, short control data lives on the two ports on the left hand side. Okay. That also carries power over Ethernet as well. Keep that in mind for the reasons why later. Okay. And the two ports on the right, the top one is for primary Dante and the bottom one is for Secondary. redundant Dante. Yeah. Absolutely right. Now, if you've got a fully switched network infrastructure, mm -hmm. this is going to be pretty good, right? Because mm -hmm. you can kind of move stuff where it needs to be through the switches and it's absolutely fine. The setup we have today has no extra switch, yep. which means that real estate is going to get taken up quite quickly. We're also not worrying about a redundant Dante stream today either. So we actually put this in its second mode, which is called switched. Okay. And in switched mode, primary Dante and control goes out on all four ports. Great. Okay. It's way That's more sense. flexible, so yep. you can do a lot more daisy chaining of stuff. You can you know, cross patch things into each other and you don't need all the switch gear. The only drawback is you lose that redundant Dante stream. Understood, yeah. So it entirely depends on you know what your, your setup is are yeah, and, and what your setup yeah. is. Yeah. So how we set up today, like we said, this wants to see Dante and um, and primary, sorry, primary Dante and control on, on the RJ45. So one port obviously has to be reserved for that. Remember, all four ports are, are putting out everything. We've got a number of other items here as well. So the network actually starts, we've got the laptop kind of controlling most things. That mm -hmm. plugs into our spectrum manager at the top. Uh, we then daisy chain out of that into the first port of our receiver. And then we take a daisy chain out of this port to go to the SBRC uh, controller at the yep. bottom. We then need a PoE port for our AD610 access point. So this is why PoE in Axiom Digital has to exist. This unit requires power yep. and it can work on PoE. You can hard power it as well if you want to. But again, we're trying to keep things easy. We're trying to keep things flexible. So out of one of the PoE ports here, we're sending a Cat5 to the AD610. And that leaves us with just enough ports to have a um, RJ45 45. going to our QL1. Excellent. There. So um, operationally wise, what do we have to do to set that up? Right, so in, uh, to get it into switch mode, yep. we go to our rack at the top here. Again, come all the way back out into the top menu. And we want to go to device configuration and then network configuration here, yep. okay? And then you get a setup option. And then you click into this and you can have those two modes. So it's factory reset mode is split redundant, as we said. If you did want a redundant data stream and have the you know, QL1 operation, you can do it. You just have to find a way of getting yeah, that okay. control data in there somewhere. Yeah. So that's just hard patch it into the Dante switch. The other thing I see quite a lot of people doing is just a little short bit of RJ45 loop. and just loop it straight in here on the, on the bottom receiver of your, of, your, of your receivers, come out of the control and into the Dante. Yeah, makes sense. And, and that's it, you've got control later in there. For the purposes of today, we're just gonna go fully switched. And it's worth bearing in mind actually, if you are having network problems, this tends to be where the problem lies. So okay. if you've cross-patched everything together and some stuff isn't showing up, 
that's probably because you haven't put it in the switched mode. Oh, so you're getting service calls that generally so often point to this this actual point. Yeah, nine times out of ten, if it's not an IP issue, it's it's probably this okay. being in the wrong setting. That's great to know. One last thing to bear in mind about this: if you change the nature of it, it will cause the unit to reboot. Yeah. So okay. Don't do it mid gig. No, no. <laughs> I have absolutely seen that not. happened. Um, so that's it. That's the network routing and everything. We've got this in the correct mode as well. The second thing that the Yamaha wants to see is a very specific Dante name. Okay, yeah. So, you know, it's not so fussy about IP addresses, really. It's quite happy to kind of, you know, just do a, a DHCP for that. But Dante names, it's, it's very, very um, particular about. It likes to see a Y001 at the start and then the rest of the information. Now, other manufacturers, you would have to go into the unit and type that in. But we have been very, very helpful. And if you go to device audio, yep. uh, Dante names, Dante device name, you'll see that we Yamaha. have put in a mode specifically for Yamaha uh, console integration. And that will automatically change the name of this device to the nomenclature that a Yamaha console would like. Yep. Uh, so we've done that, which means we're ready to, um, Great. to go and see what the console's doing. Thanks, Jack. That's really good. So that shows you how to just set up the, uh, the Axiom side of it. And what I'll do now is I'll go over to the console here and I'll show you what you can actually see on the Yamaha QL1. And we're on the home screen, so I'm going to show you the integration between the Shure Axiom system and, and the Yamaha consoles. So the first thing you want to do is press the I.O. device page, and this will take you to the Dante patch page. So you'll see here we've got some virtual devices and we've also got the Shure, the 84 um, appearing in slot 5. But just to confirm things, go to the Dante setup and then you'll see that unit again in slot 5. We'll just click on that and we go into the device select page. You'll see supported devices, device list, no assign. But let's go to device list and you'll see there's the device again. And let's just identify the device. So you'll see there that the unit has flashed. So we know that's correct. We're going to press OK. Then we're going to exit that page. And then what we're going to do is go to I.O. So in the I.O. part of this page is you'll see the virtual devices down the side. And we've got some virtual Rio racks here, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. But down here, you'll notice in slot five, we've got the AD4. So let's just click on the AD4. OK, and you'll see that it appears as like a Rio rack. So let's just click on that. And you'll see the four inputs that we've been using today. Now, from here, this is really, really good for an engineer because you can, you can actually name the channel and that will um, transmit that data back to the, um, the, the Shure unit and actually name the, on the unit as well. Um, you've got also the gain control, so we can control the gain from the touch and turn here. We've also got the mute. You can see the metering level. We've got the mute control. Uh, we've also got the quality of the signal. And we've also got RF level and then battery. Now, we know that's all working. A really, a really another cool feature of this is if I go back to the home screen, which is a lot of the, a lot of the time when you're mixing a show, you'll be on the home screen. You can actually see again. So I can control from the actual gain pot of the Yamaha, the gain control here. Uh, I can also see the um, uh, RF level, the battery level, and I can also see the frequency that it's actually tuned to. So that, again, that's a really, really, really cool integration of the Yamaha and the Shure. So there we go, that's the console side. And I can actually go and see this console in the network here as well, because right. this has a Dante Browse function. So if I come into uh, Dante Browse here, it will search the network, yep. and there we go, Yamaha QL1. I can flash that device, it probably won't flash the desk and terrify the engineer, probably just the card inside, but really good way of making sure that everything's set up and talking to each other properly. Fantastic, thanks so much for coming, Jack. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all in the next one.